In this lesson, we're going to take a look at what I call the safety line. Now, the safety line is a collection of G-codes at the beginning of the program that puts the machine into a safe state. It cancels any active cycles and anything that may cause our program to misbehave or even crash the machine. A typical safety line may look a little something like this. So here we have a selection of G-codes, all putting the machine into a safe working state, ready to start machining. Now it's also advisable to add a safety line after each tool change. This is so in case we wish to jump into the machine and rerun one particular tool, it will cancel any cycles and any features that's active in the machine. So we can jump in the program and run any tool and be confident the machine is safe to run. So let's take a look at these G-codes, what they do and how they work. Our first G-code we see here is G90. This puts the machine into the absolute positioning system. There's a whole lesson on using absolute positioning, so refer to that for more information. The alternative to this is G91. This is for the incremental position, so we can also use G91 here. This sets the coordinate system of the machine. So G94, now G94 is our feed per minute. This is how the machine will read our feed rates. So for example, if we add a feed rate of 100, that would be 100 millimeters per minute or 100 inches per minute if we're working in Imperial. The alternative to this is G95. Now this is more used with CNC lathes, but it can be used for routers as well. This is how much the cutter will move along a linear path, i.e. in X, Y or Z positions per rotation of the cutter. So for each rotation of the cutter, it would move say one millimeter. So if we were using that standard, we would use G95. But this tends to be used more for CNC lathes where we're controlling the spindle and the workpiece and not the rotation of the cutter. So for routers, we would normally use G94, feed per minute. Now when we're dealing with the center point of radiuses, when we're using GO2 or GO3, and I and K to designate the center point of the radius. This center point can be commanded in two separate ways. We can even do it absolutely, so that's the distance from the datum position to the center point of the radius, or we can do it from the last known position of the cutter, which is the standard way. So to tell the machine we wish to use the standard incremental mode, we would use G91.1. And to define these center points using the absolute mode, we would use G90.1. Now again, for more information on the difference between absolute and incremental, please check out the relevant lesson during this course. Placing G40 on this line would cancel any active cutter compensation. So this is really handy if, for example, we have a G41 active and we jump into the program, it reads this line and it would cancel any active compensation. So then we can set whichever conversation we like without having to worry about the machine reading the wrong one. So it's just good practice to cancel anything at this stage. So G40 would cancel this. Now G40 is related to G41 and G42. G41 would add left cutter compensation and G42 would add cutter compensation to the right of the tool. But these compensations will be added further down in the program. On the safety line, we always cancel any active cycles or compensation. So G40 is the only thing you would see in this line, not G41 or G42. Now G40 is our diameter of our cutter. It's the compensation on the diameter. So we're moving the tool away from the center line. So this allows us to program to the exact dimensions of the part. And using cutter compensation, it allows for the diameter of the tool during cutting. But G49 is a tool length offset on the Z. So this is the length of the tool. And this cancels any compensation on the tool length. And we would add the correct tool compensation on the following lines. So this just zeroes our tool length offset. G17 describes to the machine which plane we are cutting on. Now this is not that relevant on standard CNC routers, as we are always going to be cutting on the XY plane but it's good standard practice to tell the machine that we are doing this. So G17 would tell the machine that our tool is coming from the top of the job and we're using the Z axis as our depth. 
The alternatives to this is G18, which is our ZX plane, and G19, which is the YZ plane. For a more visual idea of where these planes sit, I made this. This little graphic explains the difference of the different planes. As you can see, the G17 is our standard plane. It would be where the material is flat on the machine bed. If the material was standing up on the end and we were to cut a radius, we would use either G18 or G19, but most CNC routers aren't capable of this kind of operation. I'm just going into all this information to make sure you have a clear picture of what G17 actually means and why we need to use it. Where we can work in both imperial and metric measuring systems, we can set this here too. So G21 would set the machine into the metric system. It would read all of our numbers and feed rates using the metric system. If we're working in the imperial system, we would use G20. G20 sets the machine to imperial units. Finally, we have our G80. This cancels any active cycles that are currently working inside the machine. Now, usually we would cancel these at the end of the cycle when we're finished with the cycle. But an example of where we would use this is if we had to stop the machine during a cycle, that cycle would still be active. So if the machine reads this line, it would cancel the cycle before it carries on. So this is a big one. This can damage your machine if we don't have this in here and we stop the program halfway through and restart it. So let's see the safety line in action. I've produced this program using Fusion 360 and it's been posted to Mac3. So this is what the Mac3 control system would look like on a program written for it. As we look down the program, first we see operator's notes. That's the section in brackets that the machine does not read. Then the very first line the machine does read is this safety line. And it's very similar to the one I've described here. I'm not going to expect you to remember all of this, so I've made this downloadable sheet that explains every G code I've mentioned during this lesson. So that's how I write my safety lines for CNC routers.